Good evening, everyone. Today is the vigil of the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Baskets for the Auditory Collection Music Ministry and the Window Project are all available on the back table. Tomorrow, after the 10 o'clock mass, there will be a reception for Father Michael in the Family Center. Father Jan Ladeza will be assigned to St. Edward Parish beginning November 1st. On Monday, November 1st, All Saints Day, Mass will be at 12 noon and at 6 p.m. On Tuesday, November 2nd, All Souls Day, Mass will be at 12 noon and at 6 p.m. And in case you didn't notice, we have a brand new rosary garden in the back lot. Thanks to Nicholas Pagliata and his Boy Scout troop. It's really nice. Uh, please turn off all cell phones and electronic devices while you are in the church. This Mass is being offered for Lucas Pagliata, requested by the Pagliata family. Thank you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We come together as God's family on the vigil of the Lord's Day, a day set aside for us to contemplate the goodness of Almighty God in making us new creations in the passion and resurrection of Christ. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. <coughs> I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Faithful offer you, 
bright and praiseworthy service, grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. and commandments which I enjoin on you, and thus have a long life. Hear then, Israel, and be careful to observe them, that you may grow and prosper the more, in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Take to heart these words which I enjoin on you today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. because they were prevented by death from remaining in office, that Jesus, because he remains forever, has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he is always able to save those who approach God through him, since he lives forever to make intercession for them. 
It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher than the heavens. He has no need, as did the high priest, to offer sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did that once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priests, but the word of the oath, which was taken after the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Lord. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? Jesus replied, The first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, his Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher, you are right in saying, He is one, and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself, is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, before turning our thoughts to the sacred scriptures for this Sunday, I just wanted to encourage you after Mass to check out behind the church the brand new rosary garden that was constructed and completed by Nicholas, one of our altar servers here, who's usually here for this vigil Mass. And he constructed that garden as part of his Eagle Scout project. So after Mass, go check that out because he did a wonderful job. You know, my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, today we celebrate the 31st Sunday in ordinary time. And so with the celebration of this Mass, we're kind of reminded that the liturgical year, the church year, is coming to a quick end because we only have two more Sundays remaining 
the 32nd and the 33rd Sunday. And then we celebrate the great feast of Christ the King and the liturgical year is over. And we begin a brand new year of grace with the first Sunday of Advent. And so, you know, as the liturgical year comes to a close, you and I will begin to see that the sacred scriptures, the readings for the Mass, the daily Masses, the Sunday Masses, that the readings now will turn our consideration to the end of time when Christ returns in glory. And the readings will also turn our thoughts to our own personal last day here on earth when God calls us into the kingdom. And these readings are going to challenge us in the weeks to come. They're going to challenge us in such a way that will we be prepared when the Lord Jesus comes to us to call us into the kingdom? Will he find us vigilant in faith, hope, and charity? Will he find us vigilant in prayer and in good works? And so the thought now is how will God find us when he comes for us? And it isn't, isn't it interesting that the first two days in the month of November do exactly that. They call us to spiritual realities. And so November 1st, the great feast of the solemnity of all the saints, where we're reminded on November 1st that all of us are called to become saints by virtue of our baptism. And then on November the 2nd, we celebrate the commemoration of all the faithful departed, where we begin to commit ourselves not just for Tuesday, November the 2nd, but the entire month of November, we should commit ourselves to praying for the holy souls in purgatory. And by doing that, the church is reminding us that nothing impure can enter into the kingdom of God. That through the satisfaction of Christ made for us on the cross, that has to be applied to us, even after death so that we can be pure to enter into the kingdom of God. And so now we begin to think about the coming of Christ and his calling us into the kingdom. And this gospel today, the dialogue that takes place between Jesus and this scribe, well, it has a lot to speak to us about being ready for the return of Christ. And so, we hear this scribe, and you know, he's unlike the other scribes that we encounter in the pages of the Gospel. This scribe, he's sincerely seeking knowledge. He's sincerely seeking truth. He's committed himself to keep the commandments, but he wants to know from the Lord himself what is the greatest of all the commandments. He wants to prioritize things because he seems to know instinctively that if he knows what the greatest commandment is, then everything in his life, in his observance of the Mosaic Law, is going to fall into place. So he wants to know what's the most important thing. And Jesus teaches him this. He says, well, here's the first of the commandments. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Isn't that interesting? That God thirsts for our love so much that he makes it a commandment. He commands us to love him freely, of course, but he makes it a commandment to love him. And then our Lord goes on to say, and the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So there the Lord makes it clear. There's the two greatest commandments. And then the scribe says to the Lord, well said, teacher, for to love our God and to love him alone is greater than any sacrifice or oblation. The scribe, he answered with insight. He now knows. 
he has understanding and that the Lord says to him you are not far from the kingdom of heaven I wonder why the Lord did not say to him you have found the kingdom of heaven or you are now in the kingdom of heaven he says no because of your understanding you're not far from the kingdom of heaven what is the Lord saying to him yes you have answered with understanding but you know what the understanding is not enough now you have to do what you have come to understand and so the same thing is true with us as well we need to seek truth more deeply we need to come to a deeper knowledge of the beauty of our Catholic faith and so in light of these beautiful scriptures what are some practical things that you and I can do to help us to love God and to love our neighbor well the first thing concerning the love of God we should ask ourselves this am I willing to spend time with Almighty God I'm sure each and every single one of us here would say that we want God to share with us his eternity to share with us his eternal life but are we willing on this side of eternity to share with him our time how can we ask the good God give us your eternal life when we're not willing to sacrifice our time for him most especially in prayer in sacred reading in meditation of the mystery we need to do those things because it's on this side of eternity when we need to begin to know God and praise God because on the other side of eternity that's what we're going to be doing is knowing God intimately and praising him the greatest thing that the human person can do is to praise God in his kingdom but that has to begin here on this side of eternity so we want to know God intimately on the other side and know everlasting life but now we have to give him our time and that's one of the most precious things we have is our time it's one of the most difficult things we have to make a sacrifice of our time but we need to do it we need to sacrifice our time in intimate communion with Almighty God that's how we love him with all our mind with all our strength with all our soul and then the love of neighbor how can we love our neighbor well I think the first thing is this who do we consider our neighbor oftentimes we consider our neighbor to be those who are in our circle those that we are friends with those that we are naturally attracted to because of their character but Jesus would say no your neighbor is every single human being even those people who get on our nerves even those people who we are not not naturally attracted to even those people that we recoil from they are our neighbor and we're called to love them and how are we called to love them oh it's not an emotional or sentimental feeling but it's this that when we see them suffering or when we see them in need we need to allow the Holy Spirit to move us to compassion to in some way to try to relieve their suffering that's the corporal and spiritual works of mercy and you know what Jesus makes it very clear in the Gospel of Matthew that on the day of judgment if we have refused 
to do the corporal works of mercy, he takes it personally that we have refused to do it to him. And so we really need to take the corporal and spiritual works of mercy seriously because that's how we fulfill the second greatest commandment to love our neighbor. And you know, another thing that we can do, practically speaking, is to commit ourselves to deepening our knowledge of the beauty of our Catholic faith. We need to go more deeply into our understanding of this one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Because if we don't go more deeper into our understanding, the culture is going to tempt us to step back from our faith. We need to be able to explain our faith. We should trust everyone that comes along and shows us, oh, I have an understanding of your faith. No, we need to know our faith in a very personal way. We need to turn to the catechism of the Catholic Church. I think I've said it so many times before, but on your nightstand should be two books. The scriptures, the Bible, and the catechism of the Catholic Church. And why the catechism of the Catholic Church? Because it shows us how the Church, through her meditation and contemplation on the mysteries of Christ, from the earliest days of the church, that means sacred tradition, sacred tradition unfolds for us sacred scripture. So we need to know the scriptures and we need to know how the church interprets those sacred scriptures by reading the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And you know, by coming to a deeper knowledge of our faith, we could say that knowledge leads to greater love. The more we know, the more we love. So let's make a commitment to know our faith, put ourselves personally in contact with what the church teaches. And then two final things to help us to, prep, to get ready for the coming of the Lord is this. On Monday, I would suggest that you celebrate the solemnity of all the saints with great devotion. Now you know, because the Festival of the Saints falls on a Monday this year, here in the United States, they say it's not a holy day of obligation. The bishops tell us that. It's not a holy day of obligation. But I would think you still would want to come to Mass out of devotion to celebrate the saints and be inspired by them. And then secondly, to celebrate November the 2nd, Tuesday, commemorating all the souls that have gone before us and to pray for them. You know, the church offers a wonderful gift from November 1st to, the, to November 8th, that if we go to a cemetery and simply pray in our own words on behalf of the faithful departed, that we can gain a plenary indulgence applicable to a soul in purgatory. But now the church has even extended it through the entire month of November. So if you go to a cemetery and simply pray for the, their release, and then pray in our Father, a Hail Mary, for the intentions of the Holy Father, go to confession, and go to communion, you can gain a plenary indulgence. It's a great gift that God gives us through the treasury of the church. So this is a special time in the church year now. As we come to the end of the year, we begin to think about what's really important. And we should never be discouraged or despair that we can keep these two commandments, to love God with all our mind, heart, and soul, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. We should never despair of being able to keep these. Why? Because in the letter to the Hebrews, we hear that Jesus is our great high priest and that he lives forever to make intercession for us. How could the intercession 
of the Son of God failed to give us the graces that we need to keep the commandments as we're taught. Praise be Jesus in the blessed sacrament, now Amen. and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God, from true God, begotten, not made, unsubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now confidently present our prayers to the Eternal Father, through Jesus our High Priest. That the Church may always keep focused on Christ and on the mission to proclaim God's Kingdom, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayers. That the leaders of the Church may make their decisions guided by the Holy Spirit, and may bring us to a greater love for Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That all citizens may exercise their duty to vote in places where there is an election this Tuesday, so as to advance the common good and the dignity of human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to see and love each person as a neighbor like ourselves, including the unborn, the outcast, the burdensome, the stranger, and the criminal, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the families of our parish may be strengthened in their love for one another by the love and witness of our parish community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the deceased members of our families may be welcomed into the presence of God's love for eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that for his birthday, our Lord may bless and protect Lucas Pegliaco, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, through the power of your Holy Spirit and the prayers of the Blessed Virgin Mary, help each one of us to love you above all things and to love our neighbor as ourself, so that we may enter into that kingdom where your Son is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation, and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself. That a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing this sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Edward the Confessor, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Felipe our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, for whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, that for thy divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who 
every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. You know, I really do not want to say goodbye to you. And especially, I do not want to say goodbye to you in that English word, goodbye because to me it sounds so trivial. I'd rather say goodbye to you using a French word. You know, the French, in their beautiful language, they have two ways of saying goodbye. One way is au revoir. In other words, I'll see you when I see you. We'll, we'll meet again. But another more profound way of saying goodbye for them is adieu which simply means, I commend you to God, because I'm not quite sure how long my, my, my travail will be. I'm not quite sure if we'll even see one another on this side of eternity. So adieu, meaning literally, I commend you to God, for we shall meet once again in God. And you know how true that is, because that will take place here because the eucharist unites not just heaven and earth but unites all of us the mystical body of christ so when you celebrate the eucharist we are truly one body and i promise to carry you in my heart in my prayers and in my memory i thank you so much for the kindness that you have shown me over these almost three years and my hope and my prayer for you is this. First of all, like we said in the homily, that you grow in knowledge of your faith so that no one will take it from you. Because if you grow in deeper knowledge of your faith, this one holy Catholic and apostolic faith, you'll love it even more. I pray that you stick together as a Catholic family. And I pray that God will increase this family in numbers. So let's carry one another in our hearts and our prayers, and remember that we will always meet in God. The Lord be with you. And with your Holy Spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the God of all consolation order your days in his peace and grant you the gifts of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts in his love. Amen. So that on this life's journey, you may be effective in good works, rich in the gifts of hope, faith, and charity, and may come happily to eternal life. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May, May God rebuke him in the hungry prey. And to thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.